And today is the day. It is the 2020 NFL draft for all of us crazy and hungry football fans out there. And when I say crazy and hungry, I'm talking about us as well, the BKBK yeah. podcast, <laughs> Team BKBK. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and I'm here with my fellow co hosts, Brian Taylor, Captain Kyle McKenna, and Kerry Idris Taylor. This is the show where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. How you doing, fellas? What's going on? Huh? Draft day? What's up? What's going on? We good. We're ready to go. Uh, Let's get it. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. Everybody's got some kind of Jets paraphernalia on today. We're not playing around. <laughs> so the, uh, the anticipation. The anticipation yes. is huge right now. I was just about to say, how long have we been waiting for this? You know, wait. So the, the the mustache is huge too. By the way, yeah, that's yeah. a nice catfish mustache. That's, I love. That's it. like Chicago. That's like a Chicago mustache. Right? The Bears. Just wait until <laughs> just 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 wait until I got the handlebars, man. The handlebars are coming. Wow, Raleigh style, Raleigh wow. finger style, <laughs> Raleigh finger style. Yep, yep. <laughs> but you over there sipping on Kerry some Saint Germain or something? What you got over there? Some Ernest 1867. Wow, look at God, you. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, seriously, um, to be honest, the emotions running through me right now, um, it's not excitement. It's not excitement. Uh-huh. You want to know what it is? It's nervousness. Really yes. Nip. You were really yeah. nervous. It's nervousness, and, and it's also anxiety, and it stems from just being a lifelong Jets fan. It is. And I can't help it. It is. You know? So I, I know the draft is about to start. Um, I'm looking at the monitor right now, just trying to just check things. And, uh, you know, let's just have our audience know what our predictions are before the actual draft actually starts up. Now, I don't mind going first. I'll take this one. And I'm going to predict this way. If there are no trades and just with the plethora of mocks that well, I've you, been you doing. You can't go no trades at this point. I mean, you know, you just got to say what we're going to do, right? No, well, right. Well, 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 we, yeah. well, we, well, you know, what we're going to do is going to be based on whatever, what happens above us, too. Sure. That's true. Well, I yeah, mean, that, well, that's, that's the true. outcome that we're trying to predict at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I understand no? that. We're going to predict so, all the possible outcomes and what our outcome would be as a result. And so, therefore, I'm going to try and give you two outcomes. My uh, first outcome. Hedge. Edge. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you're gonna go with the cornerback. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Listen, all right, here we go. Yeah. If there are no uh, uh trades or, or or anything like that, yep. I think that uh the Jets will get their offensive tackle, one of their top three. I think that one of the other teams before us are gonna be overly enamored with Makai Becton. That'll take the pressure off of us to say grab him. And I think that either Andrew Thomas or Jedrick Wills will be there and go Jedrick Wills. I love this kid. I want him. Pick number 11. That's do, my prediction. Do you think that uh, Becton is going to fall because of the uh, the drug test um, issue that he uh, had no. ten, ten years ago, yes. Now, no. No. Okay. Just asking. Just asking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I think that um, I think that I agree with you, Brandon, on the Becton. Some, somebody like the Giants – yeah. is going to is going to pick Beckton and, and or somebody else is going to be enamored with the the upside and um I would hope that Worlds um I'm sorry Worse uh Worse would uh would fall um and that's who would fall into our lap but uh-huh. we we also got to think about our worst case scenario yeah. and that is uh that none of those those tackles are available when we yeah. pick it's a very, very good possibility. I think uh, our, our, our really, like, our big-time worst-case scenario, if none of those tackles, as you said, Kyle, were not available and the top two wide receivers weren't available either. Uh, I don't know. We're I don't gonna think that's going to happen. I, I, I think the wide receivers will be there. I don't think there's any scenario where that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the way, so, the way somebody put it today that I heard was that we're either going to end the run on tackles or we're going to start the run on receivers. Yes. And that, that's that. how I think it's going to have, you know, I, I, I think that it's going to go something like that as well, but we've seen things happen in the draft, man. We really of have, of course, you know, so, uh, and, and a lot of unexpected things as well. So 
listen, it, 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 it'll shock me, but it won't surprise me if that makes any sense. Who's the next predictor? Is that Kerry? Yeah, so my prediction is that we will end up with the choice of either the fourth offensive tackle ranked wise in the draft or um, CD Lamb. And I think we were gonna we we're gonna end up going with the fourth rank um, op- offensive tackle, and that will be Makai Beckton. Wow! Mm. Mm. All right, so, so everybody, so everybody, would w- w- is everybody okay with um, third best offensive tackle, but not okay with fourth? Depends on who's number four. Then, in my opinion, I mean, well, if it's, I think, yeah, I think I, we can yeah. this believe that number four is Makai, it's, it's, it's at least from the perspective of what we've been discussing in the past. Not necessarily. I mean, he's been all over the map, and if he, if you count the post-combine bounce that he had, he was... No, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about how we rank them, but not how everybody else Oh, ranks. okay, okay, K-B-K. okay. KBK. Okay. All right, so, so really, you don't... It doesn't matter to you who's number, you know, one, two, three, whatever. You're talking about Becton. You might as well just said, uh, if we ended up with Becton, would we be okay with that? Mm-hmm. Right? That's the question. That's the question. All right. So first of all, I'm gonna say my prediction, and then I'm gonna take the question. If, if everybody it. minds That's that, um, so I, I think that all of the tackles will be gone by 11. Um, reason being is that Miami. I'm a little <laughs> concerned about them. I don't like their mental at all. <laughs> <laughs> they they should just take Tua and you know go play somewhere and get him you know Fitzpatrick in there, give him some time. And, and throw him out there. I think he's going to be a star, in my opinion. But I think they're going to overthink it, and I think they're going to take a tackle. And then the Giants take a tackle. So now you got two tackles left. So I think both of them, Thomas um, and Wirfs, and I think Becton also goes maybe 10 right before we pick. I think then we trade out of the pick with Denver. Not sure what they're looking for, but I think you know they're looking for somebody. Um, they're looking for a receiver, and they're looking for an offensive tackle as well. Right. Um, and I think we end up dropping back to 15 and taking rugs. Uh, all right. I don't want rugs not, at all. Not that I would agree with that. I would like Justin Jefferson or some other players before that. And then going back to the original question, uh, as far as Becton, I'm trading out if Becton is there at 11, and he's the only tackle left on the board. That's my personal opinion. We've talked about the bus potential – the reason that I feel like he's in this position in the first place is the the combine. Uh, and I'm not somebody who really puts a lot of, um, you know, just just credibility into the combine numbers. So for me, I'm trading out of 11 if he's there anyway, my personal opinion. Now, now, do you think if we make that trade with Denver, this goes back to a scenario that we talked about a long time ago off the air. Do you think that we could pry Philip Lindsay away from – the uh, the Broncos, oh. if we and we talked about this a lot yeah. on the on the tech stream that Philip Lindsay was not their number one back last year. It was a it was a back by committee. They have yep. Royce Freeman. Um, I think that and he's there's still a possibility. I think there's a possibility that we could get um, Philip Lindsay in the trade if we uh, play our cards right. Yeah, I mean. I- I've always liked him. As a matter of fact, he was my second running back pick in in my uh, in my fantasy, fantasy. draft last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I happen to like that kid a lot. Um, but I I think that there is going to be a run on linemen. It's going to be tough. Um, but I do hold out hope that I, I I do think basically if Miami <clears throat> with this new coach wants to create a new identity, they want to put you know butts in seats. This guy, Tua, is a big star and is a big-time playmaker at quarterback. They've already assessed Rosen. Like, he's out of here, okay? He's been there a whole year. They've, they've had a whole year to assess him. And I think that the most prudent move for them is to get Tua, sure. you know? Now, if we were talking about Herbert, you know, I think that they still look upon him highly as well, but not as highly as Tua. But So there may be a little dance there, but – if they trade up, if we see that they trade up, they're not trading up for an O-lineman because I'm hearing that they may trade up to the third pick going from five to three. 
then they're definitely grabbing the leader of their franchise. If they hold steady at five and Tua is still available, they're definitely going to grab Tua as well. Um, how, much, Tua, how much have you guys watched Herbert? I, I, I watched him a little bit, not that much, just to be very honest. Yeah, a so, little, little bit, same here. So being on the West Coast, I saw a little bit more of Herbert, you know, because yeah. the it's easier to watch the games. But, I mean, I think there's a big drop-off from – to uh, from Joe Burrow and Tua to Herbert, I, I don't agree. think that he is in the same category as them. I, no. He's, he's good. Top 10, Kyle, you think a top ten draft pick worthy? Worthy? He might be a top ten draft pick because he's a quarterback. Right. Got gotcha. you. Um, and and it's it's not it's not a particularly strong quarterback draft. Um, you know, for 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 the you know the depth of it, but I, I think that um. If you watch Herbert, he's looked bad at times. Yep. Like I watched a couple of uh, series in uh, a game the other day. I forget which game it was. Where you know, overthrowing people, stuff like that, and that is, a, I think, the difference between him and Tua. When Tua is healthy, Tua is a superhero. It's a beast. Yeah. Um, beast. Yeah. The only the only knock on Tua is his injury history. Yep. So, I mean, he'd, it'd be easy if he didn't have it. Injury history, you you just you you'd plug that in as the second quarterback taken, and 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 maybe a year ago, if Joe Burrow doesn't have the year that he has this year, um, you might be talking to a then Joe Burrow, or not Joe Burrow at all. So sure, Joe Burrow had an awesome an awesome one year. I don't and I don't think he's a Trubisky. And when we talked about Trubisky when he came out, only started one year. I had a lot of reservations about Trubisky. That all kind of came true. Um, but I don't think Joe Burrow is that dude. I think Joe Burrow is for real. Yeah, I, I think Joe Burrow is for real. I mean, he did uh, start the year before. His he just was above average, I'd say, max. You know, um, mm-hmm. yep. that that year before, and then this year, once he settled in, he blew up. And I think Trubisky. The difference there is that he really only did start what is thirteen games. You know, mm-hmm. just uh, where, whereas uh, Burrow started uh, a little less than double that. So. You know, um, I think he put in his time. I mean, if, if you're if you play college football and you start for two years, that's kind of like the vetting process. And then if you start for, say, three years, then that's like the gravy. That's like, wow, he's really, a, you know, a good, good player, you know, on paper, of course. But I'd say the uh, same thing with high school, you know, yeah. like you don't you don't expect a kid to come in and, and start as a freshman. They start as a sophomore. They're pretty good. Yeah, but a junior senior year is when you're supposed to start on a varsity team. That's why we call this, you Captain Kyle McKenna. This hmm. draft is already weird right now. They got Anthony Fauci um, talking right now. <laughs> um, yeah, they I mean, had, it's, it's, um, all, it's all pre pre work. They're doing the pre work in terms of you know how to keep yourself safe, which is yeah. You know we we've been inundated with that. Um, we know we know what we're supposed to be doing so. Yeah. Anthony Fauci, Anthony Fauci just like comes off like the like the nicest dude that like came to your high school football games and talked to you about the game afterwards. You know, right. that was like that was like he had he he had no grandson there or um he just come. <laughs> just he like just, ball with football, like, right? Just like ball with just football. Just loves football. <laughs> and, and and he'll see you on the street and he'll be like, Oh, what a game you had last week. Oh, you know, <laughs> oh that Eugene Cobra, he's a He's a once in a lifetime <laughs> talent. <laughs> Temple, Temple. Oh, he, so, he sounds Treasure. like Treasure. He sounds Sean like Krabs. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! My God! <laughs> wow. Oh, we we have plenty of time to talk about yes. Brandon's favorite analyst. Oh please. Um, oh, senior Krabs. Right now, <laughs> senior Krabs. Right now in his basement in Philadelphia. Oh, uh, by the way, Bill Kuiper. Wh- wh- whoever was just shouting out Temple, I have a quick joke. Um, you know, of course, um, one of the best backs in Baldwin football history, Eugene Culbreth, Thorpe Award winner. He went uh, to Temple. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, but Iowa was looking at him as well. Yes. And yep. he decided yep. not to go to Iowa. And then uh, one day I go up to him like, yo, huge. So what, what schools are looking at you? Oh, you know, um, Rutgers, Temple, um, Iowa. I'm like, really? Iowa? Wow. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, Iowa. 
the people are the da, 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 Iowa. And I was like, no, that's for Iona, you <laughs> That's for Iona, the Catholic high school. You're going to shout him out on this broadcast. Yes, I did. <laughs> that's terrible. I did. <laughs> He's not joking. I totally did. Hey, man, we were 18, man. I could shout that out. Oh, you know, my God. Man. So I, I, I always well, remember that, and that was funny. He was like, he sang the song, too, and I was like, nah, that's for Iona. <laughs> the big, the big um, thing with Eugene was that he had not just Iowa, but like USC yep. and UCLA, yeah. but they were recruiting him to play safety. Yeah. And yeah. he didn't want to play safety. He wanted to run the rock. And mm-hmm. Temple was one of the places that said to him, you're going to be a running back if you come here. And then he got stuck behind um, a couple of NFL guys. I actually went to see him play his senior year in Philly. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, he played Washington State, and Ryan Leaf was the quarterback. Oh wow! And he tore oh. it up that day. He was he threw like sixty five passes for like four hundred yards. Jeez. It was a it was a barn burner. And, um, and Kyle, and and you know, like uh, I think Eugene had a regime change as far as, or, or he was a witness of a regime change because the coach that recruited him and gave him the scholarship to go to Temple, I think after a year or two, he was let go, and then they had a whole new coaching staff. So, you know, the coaching staff wanted to go with their people. So yeah, I think, sure. you know, because um, I'm like, how come, you know, he's not playing more? And it was just like, because he's way too talented. Like like I said, with my own visual eyes, like with my own eyes, mm-hmm. Eugene's the best running back I've ever seen, like, in person. Like, how are you cutting on people behind you? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know? He was, play- was, James, he was playing – he was he was our Jordan. Yeah, he was oh, playing sure, at sure. he was he was playing at a speed that other people were not playing at. He was a man amongst boys and and in an Eric Dickerson type of body, you know, like a a six foot you know two hundred pound. I don't know if he was two hundred pound, maybe a hundred ninety. Yeah. Um, but he was uh, he laid the wood at safety. He could return. He could take any kick to the house at any and- time. Um, and, uh, and he, and he ran the ball really well too. We didn't throw the ball very much. So nah, we didn't need Simonetti got a lot hurt, of opportunities. Man. I know. And plus uh, with Simonetti getting hurt and then coach was like, all right, you know, if you are healthy enough to play, I'm only going to play you either on offense or on defense, pick one. Mm-hmm. And Simonetti is a born hitter. He's a born, you know, defensive player. Um, he had a pretty good arm, but, uh, he, he, he elected to stay in the strong safety spot and then. We had a uh, Kerry Kenny, who was a junior, who wasn't expected to play, come on in and play. Yeah. And then, plus, we already had you know a run first offense. Plus, you know, a, a, a kid that was still wet behind the ears playing the QB position. So, I mean, hey, listen, we still ended up being Big Four champs, you know, with a seven and one record, but still. Well, the thing too with um, Simonetti had a, a high ankle sprain before those got diagnosed. Yes, he did. So, so when when you think about it, it's like now kid gets a high ankle sprain that's like an eight week injury that's like almost almost a season ending injury um unless you can come back you know unless you got like the Tua type of you know i can go to dr james andrews and i can get like a (laughs) you know the the thing you know stitched back together or whatever but most most high ankle sprains are really hard to come back from and he had a high ankle sprain um yeah yo just looking uh, i I said look looked online and see eugene got stats man you got stats at Temple. Um, Sports Reference got him with ten touchdowns senior year. How wow. many? How many career rushing yards does he have at Temple? Eleven hundred rushing yards, average four point three. Had a total of twelve touchdowns. He had a lot of he had a lot of yards against uh, those really good Miami teams after yep. Temple yep. was getting smacked. Yep. Um, he would. I remember watching him play like second half of a Miami game and 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 rushing for yards on. Them. Um, a little skewed maybe because they had their, their backups in and stuff, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, he, he had a, he had a career. He just never got the chance to be the featured dude. I know. And I think that's because of the regime change and that's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, this guy, Eugene, he was better than Ron Brockington as a runner. He was better than Canute Curtis as a runner. And, and this was his competition. And these guys were great players as well. All, all County. You know, all Long Island players. Um, I know Canute Curtis went on to play at um, West, Virginia. Uh, West Virginia and then played in the league. He ended up playing defensive end in, in the NFL. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah I don't even think he deep. played running back in college, right? No, he played no. defense. Yeah, right. he he was a, he was, he was a pass rushing specialist at the end, yes. and he he played for um, the Bengals. Yes, and you know what? And, he 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 led. Uh, I think he. Um, I think it's now been eclipsed, but he was the career sack leader for the University of West Virginia for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Well, so can you in your, senior year, your senior year, did you guys – how far did you get in the playoffs? There's mm-hmm. only two games in the playoffs. Yeah. Semifinals, I guess. We lost to Farmingdale in the uh, in the semifinals. Yep. With we didn't lose. Yes, the game never ended. Yeah, that's, but, the, um, that's the game that I remember going to. Yeah, it was a deluge, nonstop yeah. rain, and then lightning. Yeah, hit, like what Kyle was saying, we never got we never got to finish our game. Yeah, let's so go back out there, man. Let's go back out there. It was at Farmingdale, right? No, no, oh, it was at Hofstra on the oh, turf. Yeah. Right, it was at Hofstra. They, during the regular season, you played them at Farmingdale. No, no, they didn't played... play them in the regular season. No, no, yeah, we didn't play them. Didn't? No. no. We played Hempstead in the regular season at home. Because... We played Massapequa at Massapequa. Yep. I we played the Mass- I was at, at the Massapequa game, definitely. It was in the end zone. Um, if, you look at, if you look at that, that Nassau County Conference 1 um, all-star team, um, Canoe Curtis played in the NFL. Tim Terry from, mm-hmm. from uh, Hempstead played for the Seahawks. Yep. And and played at Temple, and I believe is in the front office for the Seahawks now. Wow. Oh wow! Ron, Ron Brockington was a scout for the Jets for a long time. Um, Elliot finished Fortune. his finished his career. Um, Ron Brockington at UMass. Okay. Um, Elliot Fortune didn't go to the league. I don't think. Yes, he did. He did. I think he played like two to three years. He played. Uh, he went to G Tech, and then after that, he uh, went and played for the Bengals for a little bit and the Browns as well. Defensive tackle. Do you know what Elliot Fortune was famous for? Breaking the backboard, and that w- w- when he dunked, <laughs> he, he 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 dunked at Long Beach High School and broke the backboard like Jerome Lane. Right yeah. around the same time that Jerome Lane did it at Pitt. Wow. And and I was, uh, I, I I was. Not present for it, but there was when I was playing JV basketball. I like the back one. Listen, the Bengals are on on the clock. FYI, you know what I mean. Just four minutes minutes left. Three forty left. What what are they doing, bro? I mean, this is what kind of annoys me. If you know you're going to take Burrow, why are you going to run the entire clock, man? You you milking it, right? You had you had six months minimum in order to know that this is your advertising space. Oh please, I mean it's the truth. Do you like Michael Irvin too? Just to give you guys a heads up, um, our uh, our live feed on Facebook when it's on mute now, uh-huh. it it gives, it does our closed captions. Really? Wow. What? Yeah. So really? so so I'm I'm watching it on mute now, and uh, it it's messing up a lot of words. A lot of words aren't coming out right. Um, <laughs> you're, slurring, you're slurring your words, Brandon. No, it's no. That, I think they want us to speak that King's English. That's what it is. Bibbity bobbity boop. Bibbity bobbity boop. Is that what you said? And the delay now, the delay now, now I'm reading what I just said on it. So well, now you're going to read that part. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike Safarelli's watching us. We're watching you right back, Safarelli. Yes, yeah, Saf. I see you. You uh-huh. see me? I see you. That, yeah. What, uh, what, I wonder what pick is, uh, are the Redskins. Mike Safarelli's a big Redskins fan, by the way. Everyone. They're number. The they're number two. They picked two. Oh yeah, yeah. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you sure he's the, happy. You see the stat that Sop just put out there? What? What did um, he put out there? Our, our senior year had the most uh, most Division One signings in the history of Long Island, and that the record's still not broken. Wow. Really? Well, what's the number? I gotta go back Sop. and look at that. Class of '92. What's the number, Sop? Really? You know what? I'm sure that they're um, incorporating one double A's as well. No, he said he said D one and one double A. Oh, he did. Because it is got you. Because one double A is one. Is one, yeah. Well, he said division one. Yep, yep. You're right. My bad. Yep. Come on, absolutely. Come on, Brandon. Me and you. Hey, and what Safarelli. He said me and you. Huh? <laughs> me and you. Just me and you. <laughs> Ooh, Tammy, baby, uh, 
it did they name? There's no Tony Tony Tony. Is it is it Tim is is Tammy Luan or um is it Alan? It's Al. That's Jose. Al too. Okay. Al, Al's chiming in too. Al all yeah, day. Al, uh huh. Al, Al's throwing all these people up there uh, that He's like, are hey, a year fans. are a year older than us, I believe. Like Silas Pratt was a year older than us. Yes, he was. And and Breon Parker too. Um, yes, he Breon was. Parker's, Breon Parker is the dude that swung his helmet. At that fight. fight in Long Beach. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that was a big deal. That was a big Real controversy. Yep. <laughs> controversy. Okay, here's a select. Hey, guys, here's a selection. It's selected already. Joe Burrow has been selected officially by the Cincinnati Bengals, guys, with pick number one. No surprises. No surprises. So uh, where, does, where does Andy Dalton go? Ooh. Patriots. Should, should go to the Patriots. Is Andy Dalton gonna be a backup in Cincinnati? Just chill, Just <laughs> lay back in the cut, lay back in the cut, and earn that nineteen mil or whatever it is. <laughs> hey, he Joe said Burrow's that he would be a good pro. Said that he's willing to. I agree with you. I agree. Hmm. Now they say Joe Burrow doesn't have the livest arm, but it is more than adequate. Um, of course, he has like a seventy-three or seventy-four percent completion uh, uh, percentage. So that means he's highly accurate and he knows how to control the field and misdirect safeties. And that's key right there. Like if you can let your eyes dictate what's happening as a quarterback. Hmm. That dude yes, was sir. dropping dimes, man. He's just putting of the course. ball there. Yeah. You know, putting, he, he, yeah. he had cheat code receivers too. Your His receivers you're right. were good. You're right. Very good. She was a very yep. good. Imagine if he was at Alabama because they had better receivers. Oh, my goodness. Well, you look at, like, um, Baker Mayfield. His receivers made him look really good at Oklahoma. Yeah. And uh, and then he comes into the league, and he's not as good as he was in Oklahoma. He's a classic example of somebody who was really good in college and, and not as impressive in um, in the NFL so far. I would say that his rookie year is was better yeah. than his sophomore year as far as being in the pros for uh, for Baker Mayfield. He had a halfway decent rookie year, though. Like, Absolutely. He definitely showed promise. Yeah. I, he had a better year than Donald did. Oh, absolutely. As a, did as he, a rookie? Yeah, as did a he rookie. break the rookie touchdown record? As a rookie, yes. Yeah, as a rookie. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think he you know, so I, regressed as, as a second-year player. He had a sophomore slump, and I think he got ahead of himself. You know, he's all in these magazines, walking around with tigers and all of that. Like, he, he was fronting a little bit too much, and he had to eat a little bit of that humble pie. I still like Baker Mayfield um, as far as his ability and everything. I I think that he's going to have a pretty good uh, uh, year three. Plus, he's got a lot of weapons. So, if he doesn't make it in year three, it's going to really be just on him, you know? You, tra- you, you trade him straight up for Donald? No way. Right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. we win. I mean, yeah, we do. I'll you, take it. You don't. You, know? you don't. Straight up. Straight up. Right now. No, I don't. No. Okay. I don't. All right. Okay. I don't. Yeah. And I like Baker Mayfield coming out. Me too. Uh, and I still like him. Uh, I just like one more. Uh, what? I struggle. I, I struggle with the Donald question. I mean, he he has some really good games, and they're always stretches towards the end of the season where we're already out of it. Um, I, I, I struggle to say that this is my guy 200% and I'm going through a wall and I wouldn't trade anybody else for him. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm not there yet. Uh, and uh-huh. I don't, I don't know, I guess maybe get me to him. What are you guys seeing at this point in time that is telling you that this is 200% your guy? Like, we're not going to be, we're going to, we're going to put an offensive line. We're going to get some weapons and this is going to be the guy this year. If he's the guy, that means we're in, we're in the playoffs this year, no? I mean, yes. talk to me. Talk to me. Yes. If we get the pieces so. that allow him to be, as long as he, basically, if, if he gets those protective pieces and he has more weapons, I think that we have a shot, a strong, strong shot of going to the playoffs. Um, I think that, um, you know, with our defensive coordinator who can make, uh, lemonade out of the lemons that he was given um 
I think that uh, it, it, it's, it's, you know, basically we're just going to have to lean hard on our defensive coordinator kind of hard for one more year. And if we get some weapons and some protection, I think Donald can be that quarterback that takes that next step. He's got some of these intangibles that I just happen to like. I, I love the way he throws on the run. Um, I think the one thing that he needs to do is to be just a little bit more patient when he's under a touch of duress. I think sometimes he makes a good decision to run, but not always to run and then say throw, even though he throws well on the run. Sometimes he'll just throw it deep just to make a big splash or a big play to try to get out of trouble. And that's where he does run into trouble. So, and, and, and this is where I'm at, Kerry, as far as the playoffs is concerned, if this guy is who you guys think he is. We were 7-9 and nine last year. Um, a lot of that had to do with the teams that we played down the stretch, right? Um, but some of which was Donald's play. Now Just letting you, you guys know, sorry to step on you, Big yeah, B. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Redskins pick is in. Yep. It's in. So stand by. But all go right. ahead, my brother. All right. And you look at it. First of all, they changed the rules, right? Now there's an additional team that makes the playoffs, right? Because that's, that's yep. the rule change this year. So yep, right. you had the Titans made the playoffs at 9-7 and seven last year. And made a run. Now you're talking about an additional team behind the Titans that would have made the playoffs. That team would have been the Steelers at eight and eight. So if you're talking about Sam Donald taking that step, giving him an offensive line that could potentially, you know, um, take us to the next level and weapons and weapons potentially. I mean, we'll, we'll see what yeah. happens today. Uh, yeah. A lot of it has to do with what happens today. But well, over the next couple of days, rather with the with the entire draft and and all of that, then we should be a playoff team. And if we're not, we got to look at who the signal caller is. I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take I'll take it a step Kenny further. Kenny. Um, I think that if all the things that you said, if, if Donald is a good decision maker and he can make every throw, and you surround him with the receivers to throw to and a running game offensive line to protect him a little bit, make the play action more effective and give him time to throw down field. Then it checks all the boxes that you just said. And because he can make all the throws and he's not a bad decision. maker. The decision maker thing. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's like a great decision, decision maker. maker. He's I, been, he's been making some poor decisions. Yes. He's made some very poor decisions. Absolutely. In the red zone as well. And my, my other gripe is that the, when opportunities present themselves when down the field, from, you know, what, not really injury. What do you say, Harry? What do you say, Harry? Oh, he must I think he's got playing. a so, little delay, Harry. But go ahead, so, so I mean, again, and my other thing is the decision making is one, and the other piece of the puzzle is downfield accuracy. Chosen. Downfield accuracy. So, you know, he's got to be able to hit when the opportunity's there. Robbie Anderson is open, overthrowing. I think, I, I, I think he does have good downfield accuracy when he's being deliberate with that downfield throw. Oh, oh here comes a selection of the Washington Redskins standby. Safrelli, this one's for you. So let's see what you gotta, got. Got to be Chase Yeezy. Chase Young out of Ohio State. It's gotta official. Be. Of course. Yep, it's got to be. The draft is starting right. at, at pick number three. Got to be Chase Young. Know, yeah, you're right, B. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Starts at, starts at three. So basically what I was saying about Donald is when he makes a deliberate, like let's just say the play is designed to go deep, he throws it well. But if he's under duress and has to look off the first second and then it's like, all right, forget it. Let me just throw this up. This guy looks like he could be open. That's when I think he falters. You know? He he doesn't have Jameis Winston decision making. No. Um, Who no, does? You know. <laughs> You know, it, I mean, and that and that was a that was a guy that people thought was a franchise quarterback. Um, he doesn't have um, he, he doesn't have decision making that puts him in, in a situation where he's going to be a, a, a more interceptions than touchdowns person consistently. Um, you know, you got to you got to grow into the position a little bit in the league and you definitely need to have weapons around you. And he hasn't really had any weapons, and he had mono. So, the uh, I, I don't think he's a bad decision maker. I, I think, and I think his ability to throw on the run is a, an 
an intangible that not a lot of quarterbacks have. Um, so he, uh, I would def, I would definitely still prefer him over Baker Mayfield. But Baker Mayfield over Josh Allen? How about that question? I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking, ooh, I'm taking Baker. I'm taking Baker. I'm taking Baker over Josh Allen. Wow. Brian? Wow, wow. That's, uh, that's tough right now. I mean, you know, when you're talking about results, he looked like a gamer down, down the stretch, this dude. You know, and, and I didn't want to draft him when, you know, Donald was available and you had those quarterbacks there. Um, I didn't want to draft him at all, but he looked like a gamer. Um, yep. So he's growing, man. He's the he looks like what we wish that Donald looked like year two. I think we can all agree on that. Um, mm. I think I think the ceiling for Donald is higher. I think the ceiling for Baker Mayfield is higher as passers, hundred percent. But this dude just wills his team to win the game. You know whatever he needs to do, and he's been making those plays, and you can't argue with the results. I mean, that, I think he's better coach too. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to that sure, again. As sure. Well. You know, it's going to go. I think that. Again. I think that he also. Um, he, he's an outlier in that he's more accurate as a pro than he was on any other level. That was our big knock on him. Sure. Going in, and he's kind of proven us wrong on that. And I, I don't. I don't mind saying I was wrong about that because it's just so freaky that that would be the case. Um, but his ceiling, I think, right now, the, um, the Josh Allen ceiling is Phillip Rivers because that's the quarterback he reminds me most of is um, Phillip Rivers with a bigger arm. And more um, mobile. Yeah, Much no, more like mobile. Almost, almost like a, like a Phillip Rivers that you'd make in a video game rather than a and naturally occurring. speed all the way on like, like, like – uh... 82 or something like that instead of uh, 58. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you looked at Philip Rivers coming out and you're like, that that delivery is weird. That, um, you know, like he has a lot of things that you're not going to be able to change and you're going to have to live with and, and like if you're going to take them. And, um, and you know, Philip Rivers was the whole, it was the Eli or Philip Rivers um, argument. And uh, watching Philip Rivers play in person last year there's there's something about that dude um that's similar to what brian's saying about josh allen at the end of the year you know that like will to win and i think joe joe burrow has that too yeah um as on evidence this year it's it's, somebody was referring to joe burrow as he's just straight up an assassin wow he doesn't care by Um, the way guys uh sorry kyle i'm just making these mm -hmm. announcements um the lions have not made a trade and their pick is in. The Lions pick third. It says their pick is in. So we're going to stand by to see if it's Brian's favorite player, the cornerback out of Ohio State, you know, or if it's uh, <laughs> maybe the D lineman. <laughs> now, now I own the guy, yep. man. Gee whiz. Um, but it's, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so there was some dissension as far as who this draft pick should be. So I'm curious to see who wins here it out. Is right here. Dissension in terms of who? who Jeff dis- Okuda has been picked by the. Detroit yeah, Lions, it's official. Yeah, so so the uh, the GM wanted Akuda, I believe, and I think that uh, the coach wanted the D tackle Brown out of Auburn. Exactly. So I guess the GM ended up winning that one. Yeah, I guess the GM ended up winning, and you know what? If 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 they would have picked the tackle, then Akuda would have dropped, and there would be more space for people to pick around the picks that we want. You see what I'm saying? Because now I think that uh, I, I, his, his name is Brown. No, I'm um, confused. I don't understand what the hell you're saying. What are you saying? Basically, <laughs> what I'm saying is now the defensive tackle from Auburn, I think, will drop a little bit. And it'll expose the, our primary three offensive tackles to being picked by, you know, other teams as we keep traveling down. I don't think so. I think, I think, think so? what determines what, what's going to determine if we have availability – well, any of these four offensive tackles is what the Giants do right now. Sure. This is the first. Oh. This is the first opportunity right here, and, and right they're, here. They're, they're they're selecting a tackle. That's what it is, and I think that the Lions were like, you know what, we're gonna we might miss out on this dude, so we're just gonna stay put, right. and we don't like 
what we're getting from Miami. So whatever. We're just going to select whoever we want to select at three, which is this guy, which they should have. And now it's up to the Giants, and they're going to select a tackle, and they have their choice of tackles. Maybe yes, they'll they maybe they'll do it like a Daniel Jones type pick, like some some you know super reach that uh, there's absolutely no reason for them to draft. They could very well go Isaiah Simmons here. I was right? just about to say that too, right. Kyle. They I, could do that as well. They could. I and can that's see them going to. Isaiah Simmons. They haven't had an impact player on defense since they let their safety go. Yep. But I mean, I agree. Th- but he's a tweener, so that's that's kind of a an issue for them. In that, what position are you actually going to put him in? He plays so many positions, Swiss Army Knife esque. But what is his real position in the NFL? And some people are saying safety at this no. juncture. So I think it's going to be outside linebacker and safety in certain formations. He played but nickel I- corner at times. Yeah, that that's crazy. I know. He's a dude. It's I would just a I, testament to I, his I would athleticism. Pick, if I was the Giants, I would pick him and not a tackle. I would figure that tackle stuff Same out here. another and, way. And, and, and I would place him on the outside, six foot four, two hundred and thirty eight pounds, who runs a four three eight forty. I'd have him put so much pressure on that quarterback. He can run. He can cover. He can tackle. And then you know the 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 other defensive end who just had uh, ten sacks for them. Uh, what's his name? I forget his name. Uh, the Giants had a defensive end. He's a free agent now. They may Olivier lose. Olivier Vernon? No, not Vernon. Uh, the other one. Uh, I forget his name. But um, he had 10 sacks this year. And uh, he's a free agent now. And if they lose him, they Golden? may be. You're talking about Golden? Yes, I'm talking about Golden. Oh, the guy, that, the guy that you wanted the Jets to sign free agents. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, Dig. The, <laughs> What's wrong with that pick? I don't get it. I, I don't. I mean, but it was it was a clear dig, though. So I just wanted to. Oh no! Point no, no. Out. I, I mean, why do you think I was so deliberate in saying, "Oh yes, that's that that that's the case"? I know dings when I see them. Pause. <laughs> oh, I will. I, if I'm gonna make shots across the bow, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot. Um. So the uh, the other thing with um, with this pick is there's tackles to be gotten later. They might trade out. You, you, yeah, or, or yeah, you but, can trade out. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with the, with the Giants um, picking um, Isaiah Simmons. What's the they issue? don't have another pick, right, until like – They have like a second rounder, don't they? Nope. They have a second like, rounder. I think they have uh, a number 66. They have a six, – is it 66? I believe. Really? Stand by. I'll check it out. Really? I'll tell you right now. So my thing is this. When you look at the first three picks, you're talking about premium players. You're talking about a quarterback. They have 36. 36. 36. 36. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. They have a second round pick. But you're talking right. about you're talking about a cornerback, a quarterback, and a pass rusher. Now, at number four, Isaiah Simmons is not a premium player. It's not a premium position because he's not a pure pass rusher. He's not, you know, he's not, he's not a left tackle. He's not a, you know, he's not your, your pass rusher. He's not a quarterback. He's not your cornerback. So when you're talking about premium positions, if you're looking at, Oh, do I tackle that potentially could be left tackle, right tackle, you know, or right tackle that goes to left. Or do I select a Swiss army knife that could play safety or outside linebacker or inside I mean, if I'm the Giants, because they have the need and they're the, they have the choice of these top tackles, I'm taking the tackle. Just my personal. Who do, I hear who, you. Who, who would you compare Isaiah Simmons to in the league right now? It's a good question. Yeah, excellent question. Because who I would compare him to, I think like the, the the way that you use him is almost like Jamal Adams. Hmm. And it's and it's like a Jamal Adams extra large, right? So, yeah, but he's a, a Jamal <laughs> Adams more often to me. Jamal Adams more often than not plays on the line of scrimmage. Sure, he's not the best in coverage. No, but he can blitz the hell out of you. Yeah, and he's a four. He's what they call a force player, right? He, he's, he's a force edge player. Decision, yeah, right. So my in my opinion, Isaiah Simmons is him, but better in that he can come off the edge and. And at times is unblockable. 
He can cover the tight end. He can even cover a running back out of the back, out of the line of scrimmage. Well, I mean, we are in a, we are in agreement. We are in agreement. You yeah. can, he can spy the quarterback. He can he can do everything. Right. Um, so, and to me, that's not that's not to that's not to, to that's not an aspect that you say is a deficiency. That is, those, those are all assets. It's a premium. You know why it's, it's all assets is be, it's because instead of calling him a Swiss Army knife, the kid's a football player. That's what it comes yeah. down to. The kid is a football player, and I'm talking to a Giants fan in our feed right now, in our Team BKBK feed. Yep. One of our buddies, Al Sobel, Out Al Knight is the moniker for Out Al Knight. Okay. Um, and he is also hoping that we take – well, not we, but that the Giants take um, Simmons as well. I hope they take him. Because so, he basically – Of course. Me his too. point of view, his, his, <laughs> uh, and you know I do too. Me too. But, but from his point of view, but his point of Al, view, is saying the Giants built a legacy on defense, so let's start there again. And I can't argue Al, with that. Totally Al's, comp, Al's comping him to Von Miller, and I and and I say yes, maybe twenty five percent Von Miller, and twenty five percent, oh, and and seventy five percent Jamal Adams. But I don't. I think he's he, he's much more. Uh, capable of doing things, you know, in addition to than Von Miller. And Von All Miller right, slowed down a little bit too. I'm looking at the monitor. The pick is in, so there's no trades. Okay, the pick is in, and I really hope it's Simmons. Well, I knew he wasn't going to trade trade out because he doesn't trade out. First of all, I don't trust that that GM though. He's a little something else. So I don't know. I, I you know. He's a, little, Honestly, he's a little something else. Yeah, I haven't figured him out. So, I, so he was making me nervous. Um, I, the the word on the street is that um, the Detroit Lions players absolutely hate Matt Patricia. I heard that too. What? Yeah. That um that like that the the it's Patriots Gase isn't, right over there. Gase isn't even top three in the 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 coaches that players hate. Um, well, you, know, you know what it is he's probably doing? He's probably trying to be way too much Belichick. Like, be yourself, sure. bro. Sure. <laughs> well, they hate Bill O'Brien, too, apparently. Yeah, I know that they don't like Bill O'Brien as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, is that – oh, that's hope, Joe Judge in the in the picture that I'm looking at right yeah, now? Yeah, I hope Joe Judge doesn't have the same effect on the Giants because he's already not even addressing – any of the players by their names. He's like the running back or the quarterback, you know. Maybe he's getting old. He's got bad memory like us. I don't know. Hey, Kerry, guess what? I don't care what effect he has on the Giants because I don't care about the Giants at all. Wow. (laughs) Al, Al, I hope you heard that, Al, Al Knight. The New York football Giants. (laughs) I was going to say not, something are, slick, I guarantee you. Not of any I don't, root, I don't root against the Giants unless they're playing against my Jets. Man, I root against them too. Man, it's Jets and all. What? Shut up. Okay, hey, because you're, in, guys. It's it's you're a Wilpon guy. Shut up. <laughs> I might be an A-Rod guy in a minute. Picked by the New York Giants, guys. <laughs> what happened? Andrew, what happened? Thomas. Huh? Andrew Thomas was picked. I knew it. I knew oh. it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I thought they were the worst. Now I'm really not happy with the Giants. But no, uh, yo, I knew it. I mean, and and Andrew Thomas again in mock drafts is the left was tackle. Le- yes, your left tackle, the guy that um, was falling uh, potentially after the combine for no good reason. At the no end good of the reason. Day. No good reason at all. At the end of the day, plug and play left tackle for the next twelve years. Easily. Now, now is he the best Easily. offensive tackle according to our estimations? No, but he is the best left tackle. No, 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 no. To me, to, no, no, no. I mean, to your estimation, maybe, but to mine, he was the best tackle. Period. You, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That's a total fair point. And I'm not diminishing him because I have, you know, uh, uh Tris and, and Wills and 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 um and Andrew Johnson like neck and neck and neck. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, and, and and I look at him as better left tackles as those other guys. Well, first of all, uh uh Wills only played right and um Tris, he went back and forth, but he mostly did right, but he has quite a bit of experience playing left tackle as well. And, Becton um, went back and forth too. Becton, yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah, but you know, I I think for us, you know, the general consensus is that uh, we rank all three of those guys higher than Becton anyway. So now I'm one of make our a, top three is going. I have a prediction. 
What is it? What's up? All right. I think that we should all make at least one to, to three predictions during this uh, during this <laughs> broadcast, and then and then go back and see if they came true or not. Yeah. All right. All right. I already made I'll, one. I'll make the yeah. first one. Go ahead. Uh, wh- which one did you already make? I said Jedrick uh, Wills would be there at eleven. Okay. And so that's get, your. So you're on the record. You're on yes. the record with that one. Yeah. I'm gonna make the prediction that Isaiah Wilson, Poly Prep. Georgia. New York City. Um, I, did he go to Poly Prep? He went e- either Poly Prep or Cardinal Hayes. I, I can't remember which one. BX. New York City product. Isaiah Wilson, the other tackle on Georgia, <laughs> will be picked before pick 35. Hmm. Before pick 35? Yep. But that's still first round. No, second no, round. it's not. Second, it's, second, it's, it's Sorry, early second, second round. round. Top of the so, second. So, so what I'm saying, so what I'm saying is that both the starting tackles from Georgia will be off the board by the time we get to pick 35. Mm-hmm. I will not disagree with that. Me neither. I will. I will I not disagree, disagree with that. Me neither. He's rising up boards big time, uh, Isaiah Wilson. So, here's the one thing that's kind of saving us. There was no trades. The Dolphins are on the clock right now. There's four minutes and 20 seconds left. You know they're going for Tua. They're they going might, for Tua. They might, know, trade, <laughs> they might trade. Somebody might trade up here. <laughs> Look at Gettleman uh, get, putting on a mask. get Isaiah Simmons. If you trade up, do you get the, do you get the time on the clock? <laughs> yeah. Like this guy, yo. You get your you own get time. You get an additional 10 minutes. I think it, it resets. And oh, then if you get 10, then it's your 10. But What's Kyle, that? just to address what you were saying, if they do trade, just remember who's behind them, another team that needs a quarterback. So I don't think that they're going to trade back. I think they're going to pick Tua right here. Unless they're very comfortable with Tua or, or Herbert. Un- unless they're comfortable with – yes, you're right. Unless that – I mean, I don't think that that's the case. I, I think they're way more comfortable with Tua over Herbert. But, you know, I can't confirm that. But – uh yeah. Yeah. So my question I told is, you, uh, no, go ahead, Kyle. Go ahead. I told you guys the story uh, a few months ago that um, I went to college with the the Miami general manager's brother, and uh, they've been making a lot of moves. Oh, yeah. um, that you know, like, and since he got the job, and since Flores went down there, so I really wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, if they rolled dice here and said, you know, who who we really want. We think we can get two spots back and maybe, um, maybe trade with a, a, you know, somebody like the Chargers, if the Chargers really like somebody like Tua. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. So let's say all four offensive tackles are gone at eleven. Yeah. And you have an opportunity, and and all all wide receivers are there. CeeDee Lamb, Judy, all that kind of stuff. Washington gives you a call, says, you know what? That second round pick, why don't you come up off that? And you could have Trent Williams right now. And you pick CeeDee Lamb, first round, and you got Trent Williams in the second. Would you be happy with that? Hold on. Say that one more time. So all four offensive tackles are off the board by the time 11 happens. Washington gives you a call. Says, you know what? Why don't you select whatever wide receiver you want at 11, and we'll trade you Trent Williams in the second round. Just come up off that second round pick. What do you do? I say third round, and you got a deal. I was just about to say that. Nah, 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 nah. They say a second. That's, that's, that's the request. I got you, Kerry. Dolphins pick is in. Started to step on you guys. Dolphins pick. Thank you, is but in. no thank you. No thank you. No thank you, man. <laughs> What about you, B? Answer your own question. I'm doing it. You're doing it, huh? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And then I don't know if I'm doing it. Why not? I mean, what's the second? I would have to have a a deal in place with regard to re-signing him. Yeah. I mean, you you assume and a physical and a physical. Yeah, yeah, the physical. That's that's a little tough. That's that's the problem. That's a little tough. That's a little tough. Okay. I'm doing it. Did he actually wind up having cancer, or was that just maybe? I think it was a uh, cancerous growth on his head. Really? And by the way, I've been calling worse turfs by accident. <laughs> 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 uh, funny. Uh, 
Listen, man, this whole being at home thing 24 7 is a mind scrambler. My bad, guys. All right, we're looking at uh, pick is in. Let's see what's happened here. So, right after the Dolphins pick, it's going to be the LA Chargers, and we know that they are in need. Here we go, guys. Here's the pick. Miami Dolphins select. Tua Tuga Huhava, whatever. Yeah, yes, baby, let's good. go. All good right, news. No, fixed. Good I told y'all that was happening. Nah, nah, nah. They should have y'all should have asked me to predict that instead of the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a hard prediction. That's not really uh going going out on a limb. I don't want to have to go out on a limb. I want it nice and easy. I wish I was you saying like the, Oh yeah, they're gonna pick uh worse. It's not a problem. You like you know, to hedge all your bets. Exactly. <laughs> uh, bet. Please get out of here, Kyle. <laughs> so it was so. an animated movie, The Other Side of the Hedge or whatever, with uh you know. I forget, it was like the chickens. I never saw it. Were you talking about voodoo stuff? Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, have you guys seen uh, Guava Island? The uh, nah. the, Don, the Donald Glover Rihanna movie? Nah. <laughs> that, that was a quarantine activity last night. Guava Island? The guarantee you they're in the Caribbean somewhere. It, it, it's, it's a long music video is what it is. Oh, okay. And they shot it in the Caribbean? Yeah, it looked like something, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, Grenada or something like that. I don't know. She's from Barbados, so maybe it was something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe it was Barbados. Sounds like a video where everyone's walking around saying, "Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy." <laughs> yeah, if this, if this kid Tua is healthy, he's a he's a good quarterback, man. He really is, man. I don't think he'll i I don't think he'll play four years. Wow, I don't think he'll play. I I, I think I, I think that. When you get hurt that bad twice in your college career. What was the first bad injury? Was it the ankle? The ankle, yeah. yeah. yeah the ankle. But the thing is, when he's healthy, he's looked impeccably good. Like, yeah. amazing. Comes into that national championship, wins the game. He reminds me of a better Russell Wilson. And it's hard to say a better Russell Wilson because Russell Wilson's amazing. He also has he also had three cheat code receivers too. Yeah, he did. He did. I mean, we're talking about these. We're talking about uh, Judy and, and Ruggs go, both possibly going in the teens. Yeah. So. Yeah. But hey, so did so did uh, Hertz, right? He 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 had them too, and he one used the weapons a lot better than the other, and Hertz who's did a pretty da- good job himself. Who's the Dak Prescott of this draft? Is Hertz the Dak Prescott of this draft? I think so. Yeah, I think so. What, what about Tony he, Eason's he son? He definitely compares. He's not accurate, but neither was um, Dak Prescott. But again, what round was, did Dak Prescott get taken in? Fourth, like, round. fourth round. Yeah. yeah. Fourth round. Yeah. He's not going to last until the fourth. He's. I see him. Jalen Hurts, like, he mocks round. early. Yeah, he doesn't mock yeah. that late. He does. So Trent Williams did have a rare form of cancer, as per the Washington Post. Uh, Tammy is chiming in that the real Tammy Lou is in the building. Okay. It's not uh, It's not just Al. Oh, boy. So okay. a little bit of both. And shot at her back out. Much love to you, Tam. Tam, 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 Tam. This, you know? this guy, Brian Flores, is from Brownsville. Oh, he's from BK, huh? Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, this. He's got a smooth baldy, I'll tell you that. I don't love I don't love lefty quarterbacks. You don't you don't like Boomer <laughs> nah, size? I don't love Boomer lefty MVP. Quarterback. I love like Terry Reardon. That's a lefty quarterback that I like. He wasn't that <laughs> accurate though. Yeah, uh, but his ball he, his ball was was, was, was pretty strong. ball. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. Ball, pretty yeah ball. it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he had yeah. a strong arm. Who's up next? We got the the Chargers. Oh, yeah, it's the Chargers. They still haven't picked yet. About three minutes, 35 seconds left on the clock for them. They're still philandering over there. So big question <laughs> with the Bolts right now. Big question with the Bolts right now is you go, do you go with a defensive game changer or do you go with Justin Herbert when you got Tyrod Taylor? Um, very serviceable. And then you could go with a, with maybe a, a – a, do they have another – does, does uh, Chargers have another first-round pick? That's I don't a good think question. So. 
Not sure. I don't think so. Now we have to think of the Chargers as far as basically a new, uh, you know, a, a franchise in a new location trying to rebuild their fan base because Chargers. they did not have a good attendance. I know we're going through this you know, Corona thing and everything, but um, you know, uh, once we're back on our feet in the NFL, they're going to try and establish, you know, a, a, a fan base. And the best way to do that is to have a quarterback. You already have a West coast quarterback in Herbert. He's pretty popular out there on, on, on the left side of things. I think that uh, they're going to pick Herbert and plus they need him. And Tyrod Taylor is good, but he's a game manager and that's Char- not Char- that sexy. Chargers could wait until pick 37 and they could get a choice probably of either love from Utah state or um, Hertz. I mean, I, I think, I think both will be available at that time. Well, Hertz more so um, love might not be. Yeah, I think Love is going to go in the mid to middle late part of the first round. I think he's a first round pick. Who do you think he goes to? Maybe the Raiders. What about the Jags? At, at pick nineteen, maybe the Jags. Well, that's a little early. It's a little early. I don't. I, I, I think that's. I think that's way too early for Mike Mayock to pick a quarterback when he has Marcus Mariota and Derek Carr. I hear you, um, but. You know, the whole thing about, um, you know, uh, their coach just being like, he just loves every new QB. Now, I know that they just say that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Chucky over there, I don't know. You know, it, it, we'll see. Maybe he really wants to, and maybe Mayock as well, because their teammates are playing Batman and Robin together. Maybe they really want to put a stamp on their team. And that's big, guys. When you want to put your mark on a team, you usually start with the quarterback, you know? And the way that they do that, uh, oh, the pick is in. There's no trades yet. The Chargers ESPN, pick I'm, I'm on a little bit of, I'm, I'm on I'm a little bit of a delay. All right, I'll and, shout uh, it out to you if you want a delay. A little bit of a delay, and they're showing, they just showed all the bust first round quarterbacks. Uh, Gino, uh, Gino Smith out there. <laughs> Gino yes, he Smith, was. Manziel, wait, wait. Brady Quinn. They showed Aaron Rodgers, so I wouldn't call him a bust exactly. They're just. Uh, exactly. The, we'll <laughs> I, didn't, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see Aaron Rodgers. I, I guarantee you they're picking works. <laughs> I didn't see Aaron Rodgers. Really? You think it's going to be I worse? think they're picking Herbert. That's I predict be. Herbert. Carry. Oh, Herbert, Herbert or, uh, or Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons. Last past uh, seven, eight. That's and can crazy. we say worse? I think I think he goes. I think Simmons goes seven now. Liver works. Carolina. All right, here we go, guys. The commissioner is about to read the card. Los Angeles. No, the, select. What? Justin Herbert. I told you. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. I told you. It, it, it has to do let's with go. setting up your foundation. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Who is who is everybody's <laughs> go-to analyst? Who's the analyst that you trust the most? As far as mocking or just overall football? Talent evaluation. Talent evaluation. Why, why don't you pick out of the ESPN commentators that are over there? <laughs> I'm talking about the – Oh, you just uh, talking I'm, about period. I'm not, I'm not talking about the the Kyle Krabs of the world because Funny. we 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 looked we looked earlier today at a um I can't do somebody, this live. I don't want to incriminate myself. <laughs> no, somebody <laughs> somebody, a, somebody did somebody did a mock draft. Somebody did a mock draft of analysts <laughs> and and did, and did it like in a 1 to 32 who were the top analysts were. I would definitely say that the the guys whose opinions I pick I I trust the most would be um, Daniel Jeremiah and Lewis Riddick. I love Riddick. Lewis Riddick is. is I love Lewis Riddick. Yeah, absolutely. But is I'm it, not saying he's my favorite. I'm, I'm I'm reserving those for myself. Those are two people that I would hire as a general manager. Oh, Lewis Riddick in a minute. Oh, absolutely. In a minute. Absolutely. In a minute. They both interviewed for the Jets, I believe, too. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm not. Well, I'm not going to say anything. Sorry, guys. No, no. <laughs> no, don't incriminate yourself. Kyle Krabs. Kyle Krabs did not. He did not interview for the Jets. No, 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 not he at did all. Not interview. No. <laughs> get Captain goal. Kyle McKenna, aka the Pot Stubber. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, all right, uh, guys. Uh, so pick number seven now, and the Carolina Panthers are on the clock. This. Mean? 
may be another breath of fresh air. I think, I mean, they could possibly go for an offensive tackle too, by the way, guys. But I think that they're going to go for the defensive tackle out of Auburn, who we thought that um, earlier on that uh, this, oh. that Detroit possibly would have gone for him. This is the worst. So, so, so you 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 call him a D tackle. His highlights look like he's a DN. Well, he's a D lineman. Uh, so, so do do we compare Derek Brown to like a Quinnen Williams? Is that the type of of no, player no, that no, he no, is? No, I, I, I compare he's him real chunky. Well, he's six four, three fifteen. So I compare him to our former defensive tackle, by the way, the, the big, big cat. cat. Yeah, I compare him more to that. Hmm. He we really is talk about this kid Justin Herbert quite a bit here. He the Derek Brown dude is is a load, and yes. he's a problem. Do you think that his highlights are better than Quentin Williams were last year? Yes. But is he interior? Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I don't think the highlights. I, I thought you meant last year, meaning the Quentin Williams' first season as a pro highlights versus uh, uh, Derek Brown's uh, highlights as his last year in college. No, it, w- it wouldn't really be fair to, to yeah, compare yeah, yeah. pro so I, I misunderstood college. your question. I'm thinking like – you know, my big knock on Quinn and Williams last year was that he was a he was a, a one year starter, right? And uh, and that that didn't that didn't sit well with me when he was going to be that high of a pick, uh, even though everybody was in love with him. And I still think that he's going to be a really good player. But um, do we think that this Derek Brown guy, if you had to have one of them on your team, you know, they're only a year apart. Which which one do you get? Do you take? Listen, I'm sticking with Q. You know, Q reminds me once he's refined and everything, he has a Warren Sapp type of uh, a, 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 a quick twitch appeal to him. He's only six three, um, so he's not like six foot, say four or five, like some of these other bigger defensive tackles. Um, he can play even at a lighter weight, and I think the best thing for him would be playing the one technique where he could shoot the gaps like Warren Sapp and blow things up. That's where I think Q would be his most effective. I thought well, that Q I was 6'4 and a half. No, he's only 6'3", 6'3", 303. Hmm. I mean, if See, he trims it up and goes down to 295, about, he'll jump right out of the stand. Brown is that he, can, he has the length to play, you know, at times anywhere on the line. Um. You know, he commands a double team. Um, he's not quick twitch like I, I think Quinn, Quinnen is. Um, but he's strong as hell. Yeah. So, um, you know, I give this guy a grade comparable to to Quinnen. Um, but I think Quinnen's motor is, is better. I don't know. I just want Josh Allen from the Jags. Can we trade him? Quinn Williams straight up for Josh Allen for the Jags right now? I mean, that's that's well, really look, that's, what that's I want. a whole other that's a whole other conversation. Jeez. Yes. How many other... sacks did Josh Allen wind up having as rookie year? I'm looking it up right now before I even said anything. A Jeez. bunch. I think it's ten. That's, that's I think... why the Jags are looking for somebody else on the on the other side of him. Isn't isn't the guy that we were trying to trade for the the leading uh, sack guy on the Jags? Uh, in in Dequay, something yeah. like that. Ten and a half sacks. I was close enough. I said ten is ten and a half. Yep. Double mm. digit sacks as a rookie is is good. That's really good. Excellent. Well, again, you had the other guy on the other side too. So you were. How many du- sacks did he have? Um, the guy that we were trying to trade for, we were thinking about trading for. We still we still could we could we could do what that five it, minutes from now. Dequay. Yeah. 37 and a half, I think, in three uh, years, ask, over three years. So I don't Brand, know what he ask, had last year. Ask Brandon. He is the specialty Nigerian recruiting. <laughs> Say that question again. I was I was uh, <laughs> responding to our chat. How many sacks did Ngwakwe have last year? Uh, I don't remember. That wasn't the question. The, quest, the, the statement was to ask Brandon because he's the specialist in Nigerian recruiting. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
And why is that, Kyle? Why don't you explain because, to the lovely audience? Because, because, because you love to mock draft Nigerian football players in your mock drafts. Um, <laughs> you tend to reach if somebody is, uh, you know, a, Yor- a, Yor- a, a Yoruba. Um, you know, like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, actually, I actually prefer Igbo you to Yoruba. The science. I actually prefer Igbo. <laughs> That's a, this is a very high level um, African yeah. conversation right now. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that the those two guys on the same line definitely yeah. definitely helped each other's stats. Um, and the Indique guy, he wants out. Yeah, right. Like that, like that, no other. He's he's yeah. going back and forth with the uh, with the owner. Hey, Kerry. It seems like everybody wants out of Jacksonville, right? I mean. Look at look at the cornerback that left last year and, and the way that he left. Oh, they're about to read the card, guys. Here we go. Chargers are up. I'm sorry, not Chargers, but the Panthers. Yeah. Panthers, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. No old tackles. No old tackles. Ain't Derek tackles. Brown selected by the Carolina Panthers. We got four picks. We got we got three picks and we got two off and three offensive tackles left. Woo! We're gonna get what we want. There's a dude. I don't know. I don't want Beckton, so I'm just saying. Face, just saying. Well, again, we're going to get what we want. <laughs> uh, come on, baby. Arizona's taking an old tackle. Jacksonville, probably not. Cleveland, probably will. And then we will be left with back to. That's kind of hot. Derek sucks. Brown, guess where he's from in Georgia? <laughs> Sugar Hill. That's a smooth name, right? Yeah. Like you're up in Harlem or something. Sweet. Anyway, sorry, sure that, that was so hard. like not relevant to anything, but I just like that 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 name, Sugar Hill. <laughs> Sugar Hill, Georgia. Baby oh. Barack mm-hmm. wants to be president. He does, huh? Wow, Ashton Barnes, Derek Friend, Air Force running back, kind of hot. Yeah, listen. I mean, uh, so now we're on to pick number eight. So this is where we're going to have to be careful, guys. Yeah. Because I know that – here's my thing. Arizona could either go C.D. Lamb here, right? Mm-hmm. But they do kind of have a nice stash of receivers, unproven. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were like last year types. Isabella drafted last year. Isabella. Yeah. They also have this other guy, forget his name, but another one that's supposed to be pretty good. You still have Fitzgerald there. This is probably his last year. And then you have Christian Kirk, who um, this is going to be his third year, and he's, and he's a good young receiver as well. And then they, they just re-signed their, their, their offensive tackle. Are they going to need another one on the other side? That's the question. Yeah, I think so. Gonna, you think so? I think so. Or, or they're, they're or, definitely or not picking Simmons a receiver. Because Simmons hasn't been, hasn't been picked yet. Wait, is their QB I, a lefty? Why wouldn't they pick a receiver? Because they just traded Kyle, for Hopkins. Kyler Murray is not a lefty. Oh, yeah. No, he's not? Okay, okay. I just wanted to clarify. I, for some reason, I, I see him in my mind throwing lefty. Um, right. They have Hopkins, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Part, yeah. It's yeah. going to be O-line or Simmons right here, guys. The most oh, beast that. thing about Derrick Brown is the <laughs> single digit. The single digit is the thing that makes him look completely <laughs> beastly. Makes him yeah. look extra fast? <laughs> he has that Silas Pratt number five. Silas Pratt wore number five, and he looked like a beast on the field. That's why I wore number Love four that. in practice, and I wore number five in practice. If you remember correctly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yes. it looked like forty B. I mean, was it four? Are you sure? That's because I was oh. <laughs> stretching it out, huh? <laughs> tell that, tell that to Steve Spenteritis. Steve Spenter. <laughs> <laughs> the pick is in. All right, all right let's go. Let's go. That's not, oh, a, that's not a story we ever told on the air. I don't think so. There's Steve a couple Spencer stories. Spencer scout team story. I think he broke Mike Eel's thumbs too, man. Dag on it. <laughs> Gee whiz, bro. I mean, you know, on? he did it. I know. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't even tell me that Gus Malzahn has that wall wrap in his house. Come on, Arizona. Go, go, wow. go, go Simmons. Or a receiver go left and i don't mean tackle you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, looks like maybe when Riddick's done. After that, Jacksonville, then Cleveland. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yo, if, if, if Worfs falls to us. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Best case scenario, baby. Oh, oh man. Huh? That's the best case scenario. All right, scenario. here we go. Absolutely. Go. Eighth pick. No, no, I'm covering my eyes. 2020 NFL draft. Arizona Collins pick. Isaiah Simmons. Knew it. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. I told y'all. Listen. Woo. 